In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use GIMP to create this text that you see here. So let's start by creating a new project. Go to the File menu and select New. And I'm going to use an image size of 640 by 400 pixels. Now the first thing that we need to do is to select the text tool. And then I'm going to set the font to sans bold and the size to 150 pixels. And then just click on the canvas and type your text. And then we can move this using the move tool. So just click on that and then just drag the text into position. And now let's resize this text layer to be the same size as our background. So right click on the text layer and select layer to image size. And then next we're going to select the outline of this text. So right click on the text layer again and select alpha to selection. And now we're going to fill this text in with a pattern. So click on the bucket fill tool and under the tool options, make sure that you have fill whole selection selected and then select pattern fill. And next we need to select the pattern and you can do that with this button right here. And then if you click this button right here, you can get these to display as a list. And then find the pattern that's labeled as pine question mark with a size of 100 by 100 and click that. And then click inside one of the letters to fill this in with the pattern. And now we're going to add a drop shadow. And you can do that by going to the filters menu and select light and shadow and drop shadow. And here we want to change the X and the Y offset to 4. And then press OK. And now we're going to reduce the size of our selected area. So you can do that by going to the Select menu and then select Shrink. And we want to shrink this by 3 pixels. And we're going to fill this in with a gray color. So make sure that your bucket fill tool is still selected and then click on the foreground color and select a gray color. And then under the tool options, select FG color fill and then click inside the selected area. And then next we're going to add another drop shadow, but instead of adding it to the outside of the text like we did earlier, this time we're going to add it to the inside. And so to do that, we need to first reverse this selection. So you can do that by going to the Select menu and select Invert. And then go up to the Filters menu. And since the drop shadow was the last filter that we applied, we can find it here at the top. So just click on Reshow Drop Shadow. And for this drop shadow, we want to set the X and the Y offset back to 8. and then press OK. And we no longer need the selection, so we can turn that off by going to the Select menu and select None. And now we're going to fill our background in with a pattern. So click on the background layer to select it. And then again, make sure that you have the Bucket Fill tool selected. And then under the Tool options, select Pattern Fill, and then click somewhere in this white background area. And now we're going to merge all of these layers together. And to do that, go to the Image menu and select Flatten Image. And the next thing that we're going to do is to add a radial gradient around this text. So click on the Blend tool. And under the Tool options, select a shape of radial. And then click on this button to select the gradient type and select FG to transparent, which is foreground to transparent. And then we want to change the foreground to a black color. And we can do that just by hitting this black and white button here, which will set this to default colors. And then we want to swap the foreground and transparent colors. And we can do that by hitting this button right here. Then just click on the center of the text and drag this down to about the bottom right hand corner. 
And then next we're going to apply a lighting effect. So go up to the Filters menu and select Light and Shadow and Lighting Effects. Then click on the tab labeled Bump Map. And then click on this button here to enable bump mapping. And then you would normally need to use this drop down menu here to select the bumping image. But since we only have one layer, there's only one choice. And so it's already selected for us. And then press the OK button. And then we're going to add one more radial gradient to this. So make sure that your blend tool is still selected and then just click on the middle again and then pull this down and this time I'm going to pull it down farther than I did before. And then next I want to get rid of the bottom of this image and the top of this image since it doesn't match the rest of it. And I can do that by using the crop tool which is this button right here. So just press this button and then select the area that you would like to keep and then press the enter key on your keyboard. And then we can zoom in on the image by going to the view menu and select zoom and fit image in window. And now we have our completed image. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.